Kim at Foggy Bonnet. I'm just getting my microphone attached. There we go. How's everyone doing tonight? I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in York, Pennsylvania. And tonight I'm going to show you how to make a moonlit snow scene using ink daubers a little bit of ink and some stencils that we'll make ourselves and it also uses the in the pines stamp set but um, before we get to the project we'll give folks a second to to catch up to me here i'm going to refresh my screen here we go okay um just a reminder, my host code this month is right here. Um, you'll want to use my host code on orders that are 150 less than $150. Sorry about that. Less than $150 before tax and shipping are added. And when your order totals $50 or more, you will receive my December host code gift, which is this month it's the... Um, your choice of any Stampin' Blends combo. Our Stampin' Blends come in uh, combinations of dark and light now, and you'll get your choice of color. So that's our host code right up here. If you need to find it after the video, you can find me at foggybonnet.com. So our card project tonight is um, just really simple inking. Um, I saw someone make a card like this in the um, Stampin' Up! group that I belong to, other demonstrators. A lady had made a card for her father-in-law and I thought it was so pretty. And then I was looking around on Pinterest and I saw the idea for the moon also. Um, I've done mine in two different colors. This is done with the misty moonlight and this one was done with the night of navy ink and um, the night of navy comes out darker and night of navy is really an interesting ink to work with because it it will look purpley sometimes and yet sometimes it'll lean more towards the cool side um, it's this is really interesting. I love all the variations in color. It actually does look like a night sky. But um tonight's demonstration I am going to use the misty moonlight and um show you how I how I do the sinking and the stamping. And I've added some bling. I'm just admiring these little gems that I put on. Can you see them twinkling? I love that. Okay. So Let's see, what do we need to get started here? We need a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. Four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And this is Misty Moonlight cardstock that I'm using. We need a three and a three and three quarters by five inch Whisper White mat. That's the piece that's going to go behind our inked cardstock. That's three and three quarters by five inch, whisper white. And then the piece that we're actually going to ink on is three and a quarter by four and a half. Three and a quarter by four and a half. But of course you can make these dimensions um, whatever you would like them to be. I wanted for this card, I wanted it to look almost like a framed piece of art with a very thick um, bit of the mat showing behind so that's what I was going for but you can adjust these measurements to suit your taste and I'll lay this here so we're using a sponge dauber I label my sponge daubers so that I always use the same one with the same color so this one says misty ml misty moonlight and I made myself a template for the moon in my card and I made that with a one and a half inch punch. I just cut a three and a half by three and a half square of Whisper White cardstock and punched out um, pretty much from the center this one and a half inch circle. And I will tell you I used 
I made a separate stencil for when I worked with the Knight of Navy. Um, sometimes if you mix materials, when you have different color inks, you'll get some of the other color ink in with your current ink, and I didn't want that to happen. So I made two stencils and I marked them. This one was the Knight of Navy stencil, and this was is the Misty Moonlight stencil. I marked them so I wouldn't get them mixed up. So to get started, I'm gonna roll up my sleeves here. So we're expecting a big snowstorm here in central Pennsylvania tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon through tomorrow night, they're saying in our area, in the Harrisburg area, um, what did I see last? 12 to 18 inches. They call that plowable snow. Yes, it is. So I did some of my errands today. <laughs> get all that done and uh how's the weather where you're at is it nice i don't have a helper tonight so i can't keep my eye on the comments but every once in a while i'll peek over so we have our stencil and we want to use it to mask out the area where the moon is and i didn't measure the location of this moon but here's a rule of thumb if you Cut your card into quarters, just visually, if you make it into quarters. Put the moon stencil in the upper right quadrant so that it would be just crossing over the dividing lines between the quadrants. That's, that's about where I, I put mine. Not real exact, but that'll get the location correct for you. So I have my misty moonlight dauber and my Misty Moonlight ink. And I'm just gonna hold this stencil in place and I'm going to ink heavily around the edges. Make sure I stay on screen here. Around the edges and I'm going to keep the middle area light. What I have found after making a few of these is what makes it really um, appealing and pretty is when you have this entire area in the middle light. It makes it look like the moonlight is reflecting off the snow down here and, of course, into the sky up here. Um, I, ma I did make one that was a little darker in the bottom, and I didn't like it as much. I mean, it's still pretty, and I'll still use it on a card, but I think it's prettier. The card is prettier when, um, when you leave this area down here light also. So I kind of think of maybe an oval in the middle of the panel that I'm going to want lighter than around the edges. How's that? Okay, so I'll get started and I'm just gonna tap my dauber on the ink pad several times and I'm gonna start in a corner. Let's see, do I still have my... I'm gonna start in a corner and just Kind of make little circles with the dauber. And I find that if I hold the dauber perpendicular to the paper, I avoid getting marks. What happens is ink will stay on the edges of this dauber and it'll wear off in the middle where you're rubbing. And then if you tip the dauber, you might get a dark spot where the edges of this touch the paper. So I like to keep it perpendicular and um, come in from the edge like this. And I, I hold it with these with my thumb and what's that finger called? Not my ring finger. The one next to my pointer finger. I hold it like that to keep it steady, to keep it from moving around too much as I'm using it. So I'm gonna focus first on just getting the dark down around the outside edges. And then I'll go back in and kind of smooth things out and bring the color into the middle, but, but leaving that middle light. And to turn this, I just get the edge of the paper, hold my stencil in place and turn. I 
I should have Christmas music playing. I could hum or sing. No, you don't want me to sing. <laughs> you really don't want me to sing. So I'm just coming around here. And once I have the entire edge kind of outlined, then I'll come into the middle. Get this top just a little bit darker. Okay, so now I'm going to just bring my color into the middle, but I'm still going to start on the edges and just bring it all the way into my stencil. And I maybe won't pick up as much ink each time so that I'm not dealing with as much ink as I come into the middle. I think initially I was tapping maybe three or four times. Now I'm just going to tap twice. So I'm picking up a little less ink each time. Coming into the middle. And if I get kind of a harsh looking line... I'll just go back in and work over that a little bit. Now, this won't show much because I'm going to stamp the tree over it. But I'll just keep working over things. pretty good coverage the way I want it. I'm going to turn this. I will lift the stencil off and that looks pretty good. I like the contrast there. That tells me I have it dark enough up to where the stencil was. I really like that one. So then what I do is I take the negative shape from when I cut my stencil and I lay it over this circle because I'm going to add just, just a tiny bit of color around the outside edge of the moon. Not a lot, just a little bit. Make sure my um, sponge dauber doesn't have too much ink on it. And you won't get this lined up exactly. Um, and that's okay. Just wanna kinda get close. And then I just go around the edge here, just lightly around the edge. Oops, took too much ink off. Just a little bit around the edge and you, it'll look like you're not doing anything really. But there is a little bit of color there. Can you see that? I might go back in and add just a touch more on the top. Just a touch more. Yeah. And if you get that little halo around your moon, that's okay. Don't worry about that. It actually adds kind of a nice effect. Oops, almost dropped it. Do you see I have it in this card? And I don't mind that at all. I like that little halo around the moon. So I think we're done with that, that part of the inking. So I'll set my sponge dauber aside and my stencils. And now what I want to do is I want to stamp and the stamps that I'm using are photopolymer, so I'm putting a little um, cushion down here. This is the pad from my Stamparatus. And I have my stamps mounted already. So the first one I'm going to use will be the, the grouping of pine trees. 
be easier to show you with this. I'm going to use this grouping of pine trees right here. And it gets stamped so that the pine trees come up into the moon a bit. And the pine tree on the right goes just off the paper, just barely off the paper. You see that right there? And I'm using the same ink. And for these pine trees, because they're a little further in the distance, in the distance, I'm going to stamp off once before I stamp some ink up here, and I'm going to stamp off once over here quickly. Oops, and I don't have. I'm going to use this actually. I'm going to stamp off once quickly, and then I'm going to stamp on my image here. And then I'm going to stamp one more time, and this will be even fainter for the more distant trees. There. You see how that creates depth? Oops, picking everything up. The lighter trees look like they're further away. Okay, so the next stamp I'm going to use will be this larger tree, the line drawing the larger tree and I'm going to stamp it full strength and going off the left edge of my inked panel. So I'm going to ink up here And I'm going to line it up. I'm using the top of the tree and the bottom of the trunk to help me line it up to make sure it's vertical. And I want the top of the tree to be higher than the moon. Can you see that on my other card? Because it's close to us, so it appears big. Like that. There we go. And then finally, I'm going to use, I'll show you, this narrower tree right here, line drawing tree. And it's going to be stamped next to the wide one I just stamped. And the first one that I stamp will be full strength. Ink up here. It's going to be full strength. And just, oh, I don't know, half an inch or so to the right of the bigger tree. And again, I'm focusing on just making sure I'm vertical. Stamp once. Then I'm going to stamp off just to the right and down a tiny bit. Or, I mean, I'm going to stamp a second time with this stamped off stamp down and to the right. And then I'm going to do a third image in between that narrow tree and the big one, but it's going to be stamped off once. I think I'm going to stamp off twice to stamp that one right in between like that. So it kind of recedes into the distance there. So I don't need my ink anymore. I'm going to close this up and get it out of the way. So the next thing I would do would be add the sentiment. And I used white embossing powder to do this. I stamped the um, sentiment with Versamark ink. I'm just grabbing the stamp set is the Dove of Hope stamp set. And I used the Peace, Joy, Love sentiment from that set. And rather than take the time to do that tonight in this video, I already have one inked and the sentiment stamped on it. So we'll set this one aside. And one thing I will tell you, when you go to emboss your sentiment, you want to make sure that your ink is dry. Um, if your ink is still wet, if you've just finished inking these edges, um, you might get embossing powder where you don't want it. But anyway, so I already have this one um, done up, and I'm going to 
oh, I forgot a step. To add the stars in the sky, I used a, it's called a Stampin' Chalk marker. And these do not lay down a ton of ink, or at least my experience with it shows me. It doesn't lay down a ton of ink. And so I just go back over. I just start laying down dots and it kind of absorbs into whatever you put it on. So I just keep going back over and putting dots in the same spot so that it kind of builds up. And you can see as I keep dotting this on, it builds up. And then the ones that when you stamp down here where it's light, you get kind of a, a shadowy effect, and I like that. I just love the texture this puts in the nighttime sky. So I just keep going back over my dots. You could also um, heat emboss these with white embossing powder. There's a stamp in this stamp set it's this one with the dots. And you could um, definitely use white embossing powder to do this, but I wanted mine to be a little more subtle, so I chose to do this. It takes a minute, but that's okay. I like the effect of this. I like the softness of it. I don't guess it would be snowing if there was a full moon coming up, but... Um, I don't know, it just, it feels like stars, it feels like frost in the air. I just, I like it. So I'm just going back over my dots and just laying down a little more ink each time to get those a little whiter on my paper. And I'll put a few down here. Clean this off just a bit. There we go. I think that's pretty. I love that. Okay, so let those dry. So the next thing we want to do is we want to adhere our artwork to our mat to center it like that. And I'm just going to use um, stamp and seal here. I have found if I tip back, it helps keep that adhesive from retracting. Let me get this lined up. I have some fuzzy edges there, so I'm wiping away. If you receive my newsletter, and you read it today, you know that um, the mills that make our Whisper White cardstock have closed. Um, they were impacted by um, the virus. That industry has been impacted like so many. And the mills have closed. And so we will no longer have Whisper White cardstock, which... I was shocked when I read that news. Um, I love Whisper White. I love the feel of it. I love how it works with ink. Um, they have found a replacement, and of course, being Stamping Up, they Stampin' Up, they have tested um, the replacement. It will be called Basic White, but you can still buy the Whisper White items. Um, they have put a limit on purchases. You can buy two items. Uh, you're allowed two per item per order. So I could order two packs of Whisper White cardstock per order. You can place another order and order two more, but it's two items, um, two of each item per order. So just an FYI, if you love this cardstock as much as I do, you can stock up now before it is completely gone. I'm sure we'll love the new stuff um, too. It's just, you know, when you're used to something, um, I really like this cardstock. So I'm talking and not working here. So now I'm going to adhere this to the card front.
And you could pop this up on dimensionals if you wanted to. That would be pretty. I'm going to keep this pretty simple. There we go. And then the last thing I did was I added a few of these. Um, these are called rhinestone basic jewels. And I added some of those. And on the inside, anytime you use a solid color cardstock like this, you want to put a liner in. And this um, inside sentiment also came from the Dove of Hope set. And it would be pretty maybe to stamp one of the pine trees, one of the smaller pine trees. There is a small one in this set down in a corner. So there you go. That was pretty simple, right? You could do this. I like how these look. Um, I might try another uh, with the Knight of Navy and maybe leave it lighter down here. I do like the color of the Knight of La Navy, um, but the Misty Moonlight came out a little softer, I think. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll make one, and I will see you again next time. Thanks. Thanks.